let's talk about creating and naming variables. So one of the first things that you're gonna need to, need to do in MATLAB is create variables. So like x equals whatever, some number, for example. And when we want, run this line of code, it echoes out into the command window, the result. Now, usually the result is just the same thing that we put in, unless there's some sort of calculation here, in which case uh, MATLAB will perform the calculation for us. So I can make that slightly more complicated. And now we see that MATLAB actually performs the calculation. The reason there's a little orange underline here with a, a warning and the reason the equal sign is underlined is that MATLAB is suggesting that I suppress the output of this statement. Now the way to do that is just to put a semicolon at the end. If I add in a CLC to clear my command window and run it again, the problem with that is that now that we don't see any result at all which can be good if this is just an intermediate calculation on your way to a final solution. But if we want to see the result, the value of x, we should use something like maybe display to display x. But I'm perfectly happy with you not suppressing your output on like the final step of a calculation to get a result to show. So I'll put that back in. All right, but this is going to be about naming our variables. So the first thing is that capitalization matters. Lowercase x and capital X are different things. So if I run this again, these are two different results here in the command window. And we see in the workspace that there are two different variables. So we have to be really careful about how we name our variables so we don't make any mistakes there. While we're on the point, I have some spaces right here uh, and no spaces on the second example. And in this situation, it doesn't make any difference, right? The spaces can be around the equal sign or not, and we get the same result. Suppose we had a variable name, though. Now, I know birthday is all one word, uh, and we'll just, you know, give it a number. But you cannot make a variable that has spaces in it. And that is generally true in basically every programming language. Because the language would think you had two different variables, perhaps. So no spaces. Um, no apostrophes, we can't do uh, Susie's birthday, that does not work either. You'll get an error of some kind or another. Um, really no sorts of punctuation at all. We don't want exclamation marks, uh, we don't want any of those things. You are limited in your naming of variables to lowercase letters, uppercase letters, numbers, and underscores. Uh, I don't know, I'm just throwing some stuff in there. So this, while a silly and uh, confusing variable name, is a perfectly acceptable variable name in terms of the symbols that are used. Let's, let's just continue with the birthday example. I personally like this convention for variable names that have more than one word in them. Here I have three variables, and I have given each of them a starting value. This is the naming convention that I prefer. I like to use an underscore if there are multiple words in my variable name. However, in a lot of programming languages, and I think probably also in MATLAB, the convention is to simply capitalize the first letter of any other words in the variable name except for not the first one. So keep it lowercase at the beginning, but then capitalize any other words. But I would like one or the other of these uh, standards. And I, I kind of per personally prefer this one. You should always strive to use descriptive variable names. That is variable names that tell you something about the information that you're dealing with. And so like, I don't think M is a very good variable name because what is M? Is M the mass of something? Or is it the number of molecules? Or what is it? I find these two variable names to be more descriptive and informative than just a single letter. So try to avoid single letter variable names. If you would prefer to use a single letter variable name, that's okay, but you must then write in a comment what exactly it is that you're dealing with. With the comments, it's also a good place to put in like what the units might be. And so you should probably include that even if you have a more descriptive variable name. And this would be like, I don't know, moles maybe, is that right? Something like that. Let me go ahead and execute this code again. So if I do control enter to run this code, we get echoed into the command prompt, the results of the code that I ran. And you see in the workspace, it gets filled up with all these different variables that I have created. And the previous variables, x, uh, lowercase and capital X are still available. I could still use those. I could use those in a calculation even if I wanted. 
right? So I could say X times capital X even run it. And now I have a different value for M. I can go over into the command window and type in X and hit enter. And I can still see that value. If you want to clear out the workspace, the word that you'll use is literally just clear. I like to put CLC and clear together to just put myself back to a blank slate, back to how I started. Now, one other thing I want to say about variable names is that if you're dealing with a constant, like the speed of light, for example, pi is actually built in. So, I mean, normally I would say pi would be a good example as well. Uh, what's another constant? Um, maybe gravity, right? So like gravity being 9.8 meters per second squared. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is if your variable is a storing the value of a constant. So the speed of light should not change. Uh, gravity, you know, on the surface of the earth is a constant value. We typically indicate that with all capitals. This is just a convention to help humans read our code. And this is something that holds true across all the programming languages that I've dealt with as just a convention that's used. The other thing I want to say before I move on from variables is this equal sign right here. So we're always going to start off a variable with its name, followed by an equal sign, followed by either a number or perhaps a calculation uh, or maybe even a call to a MATLAB function, something that's going to generate a resulting value. And that value is going to be put into computer memory that this variable refers to. So every variable you should think of as a labeled box. The label for this variable is its name, birthday. The box is kind of hidden behind the scenes. That's the computer memory where the variable's value is stored. So inside of the box, after we run this code, is the numeric value 18. And we can access that value by using the name again, right? We can use the name on, oh, what did I do there? We can use the name uh, even on the right side of the equation. Now I know it doesn't make much sense to multiply it by two, but there I'm gonna go ahead and do that and run it again. So we have the initial value 18, and then I've doubled, doubled it for some reason, just as an example, to get 36. When I run this second line of code, the 18 gets accessed on the right side of the equal sign, and then it gets multiplied by two, and then the result of that 36 gets put into the memory referred to by birthday, replacing the 18 that was previously located there. So unlike physical boxes, when we put something into a variables box, it replaces the old thing that was in the box. We don't have like both the things in the box. We only have the new thing. The old thing is deleted. And that shouldn't be terribly unfamiliar because that's pretty much what happens when like if you're editing a Word document and you save it and then later you edit it again and change a bunch of things and save it, it saves over top of the old Word document. You don't have access to the old one anymore. So that's what's happening with the equal sign here. It's important to know that this is not mathematical equals. It is a programming equals. So its official name is assignment, but you can just think of it as puts. You're putting the information on the right side into the labeled box on the left side. 